to Calling Out with Susan Pinsky, a place where Susan can introduce to you psychics, clairvoyance, past lives, and paranormal experiences. Now, here's your host, Susan Pinsky. We're back and happy to be on Facebook Live slash Susan Saylor Pinsky. I have an author and award-winning filmmaker by the name of Richard Martini, who has written a book called Hacking the Afterlife. He was invited by my executive producer, psychic du jour, Jennifer M. Schaefer. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, you guys. We're just going to we're going to fall right nice. into this. Uh, we we also have Rebecca Fearing, who is a favorite by many of the Calling Out listeners. To, I love working um, with. To, you know, mm-hmm. listen listen to how Jen and Richard work together. Um, we also know that, and also Drew's sitting here, he's, he's on his phone. He, might, he may chime in because he's a big history buff. And we have watched the documentary that Richard has, has made called Emilia's Electra, which was, was that, no, Amelia's Electra, right? Or yeah. Earhart? Yes. And it's, okay. it's this document. Isn't that what it is? Yeah, Earhart's Electra. Earhart's. I beg your pardon. It is about Amelia Earhart. So, so, um, well, if I could just uh, interject a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, may. and um, I had uh, been writing some other books about what people say about the afterlife while under deep hypnosis. Mm-hmm. And Jennifer. I was listening to the my dulcet tones <laughs> in, in the Kindle version, so I you, and uh, contacted you know. me and said, um, and and at the time I was mostly focused on what science, let's say, what what uh, consciousness studies were about, and I was talking to people who had been under deep hypnosis, and I had covered seven thousand clients of Michael Newton, and I had filmed forty five sessions myself, choosing skeptics to come in. So very interesting research. But I, she told me that she was working with mediumship and spirituality and intuitive. Yes. And I said to her at the time, you know, it's not really my field. Right, right. Most people come <laughs> to see uh, a medium because they, they're worried about love, their love life. Uh, you know, forgive me. But this was my opinion at the time. Or, or f- seeking out what the future might hold. Right. And or it, closure for a yes, loved one. That's true. So, well, that part of it. So, but at the time I said, so uh, what kind of mediumship do you do or what's that about? And she said, well, I work with law enforcement often and helping with missing person cases. Mm-hmm. And something went in my head and said, um, how'd you like to work on the most famous missing person case <laughs> in history? I know. What an experience. And within, I don't know, a day or two, I was in her office and for three hours filming an interview with uh, a care a person that I had been focusing on her life for 30 years. I uh-huh. worked on all the movies that have been made about her. My research is very extensive. Uh-huh. And and I previously, just coincidentally, I'd had two other mediums that I had offered like 20 questions to where they would talk to Amelia Earhart. And I thought, well, this is a great way to disprove that, you know, I'm talking to Amelia Earhart. I'm going to find another medium, and maybe she'll have completely different answers. Right, right. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not what happened. And, <laughs> and the third They're all the same, right? Is yeah. that, that's your finding. But a, a third of the book is really Jennifer talking to Amelia Earhart directly, telling some details about her life that no one knows. And, and the reason I know no one knows is because I've talked to all the experts. But uh-huh. ultimately, we... We got to meet uh, her girlfriend, Amelia's mm-hmm. girlfriend that she had had. She had an open marriage with her husband. Things that details about her life that are not known, but I already knew. Okay. Because of my forensic research when I worked for Fox uh, on the movie Amelia. And so they paid me a lot of money to do all the background research. And I also used that uh, time and effort. So to- what did you find... When you were, where, what point were you at when you started working with the mediums? Where you, where you, you were looking for answers. Well, like, by this how time, how is that helpful for you? Well, for me specifically, I had been to Saipan, mm-hmm. where I have, I'm aware that 200 people had claimed that she was there, and so mm-hmm. I flew to Saipan and I interviewed 15 new eyewitnesses, people mm-hmm. who had never come forward before. So I was getting details and details, but there were certain things that were missing from this report that I was, you know, compiling, and ultimately. I had conflicting reports whether she had died at the hands of the Japanese, being mm-hmm. shot mm-hmm. or beheaded. Right. And so I had heard really eyewitness people who had said, you know, I saw her shot. So when I was working with Jennifer, I asked her that specific question. And, and 
to my surprise, she said neither. Yeah. Um, she died from dysentery. And subsequently, I've, I've discovered that, that it, there is more research. Uh, there was a book in 1963 of Fred Gurner who talked about her dysentery. So she was saying yeah. precisely what a reporter had learned in 1963. But here comes the really amazing detail, which is I was arguing with Amelia, saying <laughs> this can't be right because my research shows. And she said, Amelia said, well, those two sh soldiers dug me up, uh, but they only found my arm. Okay. Now, I'm the only person I know aware that two soldiers had claimed they dug her up. It's in Fred Gurner's book in 1963. Uh-huh. Okay. Which she probably didn't read. No, of course. Mm -mm. But the other thing is no. that she, what she said was very specific. They only found my arm. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes from her office, I get a call from a former NTSB investigator in Seattle who says he had just seen all of the historical research that was used in the, the show, the History Channel documentary recently. Mm -hmm. And he said, Rich, I, everything that you've said is in this guy's research. He said, except when the soldiers dug, up, dug her up, they only found her arm. Yeah. Now, this was a new piece of information mm -hmm. that came from Amelia. I asked Amelia where she was. Jennifer got a pencil and a piece of paper and drew <laughs> a map of Saipan where I had just been. And you didn't think she was crazy. Well, because she, I thought I was crazy because everything He's she like, was saying was this. And he asked me corroborating. He, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. He asked, me, he asked me repeatedly about my answer. He's like, are you sure? And I would get, I would go, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I have no idea. I'm sounding crazy. The worst thing that can happen, I'm like, I don't even know, in my mind, I feel like I'm connected to her, but I don't know if that's, you know, I was grappling with that. But I, I said, she keeps going through this over and over, and I just have to, in my world, I just have to trust it. Mm -hmm. Because if I start doubting what comes through, I get cut off from the information. Uh -huh. that my makes mind sense. overrules everything. And before he even came to my office, he's like, let's just see. He didn't even tell me he was going <laughs> to, about Amelia or what he, who he wanted to talk to from what I remember. He's mm -hmm. just like, let's see if we can just tap in and see. Right. And Isn't that's it fascinating, though? So, so. And yeah. we continue to do that. I must tell you that uh, this, this was about two years yeah. ago. And like I say, part of hacking the afterlife was that. But we continued our journey. And so what we've, we've come up with this kind of really unusual thing where I film these events every time she and I get together mm -hmm. for a couple hours, I put a camera on and I, instead of doing the thing of like me testing her knowledge about somebody that I know who died, <laughs> instead of doing that, we just skip down and I say, Hey, anybody here want to come and talk to us? And as we sit there, she'll say, Oh, so-and-so is here. Yeah. Sometimes there are people who just died that I know personally, mm -hmm. and so. But instead of asking them to prove who they are, I say, "No, let's let me ask you something unusual. What was it like when you arrived in the afterlife? What was your experience? Who greeted you?" Right. And in those that is interesting. Well, in those yeah. answers, you get verifiable details because they'll say, "My mother was there." Okay, how old was your, how old your what's your mom's name? And they, yeah. for, for example, Harry Dean Stanton, the actor who passed away about uh -huh. a month ago. Uh -huh. I knew Harry very well. I jammed with him in a number of nightclubs, and we were close friends through a mutual friend mm -hmm. who inspired all this research. She passed away in '96, and she's the one who sort of really introduced us, me and Jennifer, ultimately. And she came, she was there, Luana was saying, well, Harry Dean is here. So I asked him, so Harry Dean, like, how did you show up in the afterlife? And he said, Luana tricked me. And then he told this elaborate tale about how Luana had appeared as he knew her back in 1967, taking them on a trip to the Monterey Pop Festival. What makes that so unusual is Jennifer, of course, didn't even know about the, I mean, she didn't know who performed at the Monterey Pop. She didn't know there was a festival. She didn't know what, <laughs> what Harry was talking about, but I did. And I knew who was in the car with her in 1967. Oh, my gosh. So, so then he verified all those details, including oh, a, that's crazy. A, a really f yeah. a verifiable detail. He said there were five women at his deathbed. And one of them, and, and while, he, while he was crossing over, he saw a child, a baby that he, one of his girlfriends had had back in 1962. And he said, you know, I was greeted by this baby. So now when I went to his memorial service a week later, mm -hmm. I met these five women who were at his deathbed. And wow. one of them said, he suddenly said, apropos of nothing, oh, hand me that child. Hand me that baby. <laughs> so he saw that child.
Yeah. And by the way, Harry was an atheist, uh-huh. and he was an avowed atheist. So when we asked him, I asked Jennifer, so what do you want me to tell people at your memorial service? And he said, tell them to believe in the afterlife. <laughs> oh, really? And I laughed, and I said, Harry, come on. You were a famous atheist. You think I'm going to get up in front of your people and say, oh, Harry came to me, Rich Martini, and he said, you yeah, believe? Yeah, really, it's really hard to but, convince people. But let me, just, let me just say what he said. He said, no, tell them to believe in the possibility of the afterlife, because once you allow yourself that there might be a possible afterlife, then you stop worrying about it. Mm-hmm. You stop spending time in your life telling people how to behave or how to judge or how to, how to look at things. He said, once I, once I realized when I got here that there was one, I thought of all that wasted time right. when I could have just been living. I thought, okay, I can tell you that. Yeah. I can say that, Harry, that I'll be happy to, yeah. as I just did. That's crazy. Yeah. So when all that information <laughs> came through, you can only imagine, I'm like, yeah, he says that there was five women around him. And he's like, okay. I'm like, and then there's a baby, <laughs> you know. So all that stuff that comes through, and, and we're la- and by the way, we're at Fish Bar in Manhattan Beach as he's filming. We're eating. So and that's you know, the only time I have for lunch. You know, it's <laughs> but, not. It's just like we're having a conversation. Yeah, right. Some side. of the best spirits come through when you're at dinner. I mean, I'm Rebecca, sure you've Rebecca seen it. Rebecca has an ability to like suddenly you'll just be having a conversation with her, and she goes, "Oh yeah, you know, so and so's here." So and so's here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. because they yeah. kind of relax with you. And well, I think of up. it, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rebecca, but mm-hmm. I think of it as. You know, when we were kids, we used to have to take two paper cups and we'd put a string between them and then we'd try to listen, you know, to each other talking. Right. And sometimes it was successful. You know, you could hear your brother, you know, in the next room saying, shut up, go to bed. And sometimes not. And, and mediumship is a way of getting this cell phone reception. Somebody's with you who can actually access people who aren't there. And I would just say this. What I try to focus on, and I'm sure Drew would appreciate this, what I try to focus on is new information. Not something I could know, you know, some detail about their life. I'll give you an example. When my father passed away, Mm -hmm. came and woke me up in the middle of the night, and I thought, oh, my God, am I dreaming this? Am I mad? I could feel his hand. He said, I'm here with Mama and Papa, and he named his brothers and sisters. But he also named six people I'd never heard of. (laughs) <laughs> and the next day, I said to my mom, you know, I think dad visited me last night. She was like, oh, okay. And I said, so, you know, he I said like this. Okay. <laughs> he, he said, you know, he, I love you very much, and I, I'm, I, I'm experiencing indescribable joy, he said. I said, but mom, who are these six people? And she said, oh, those are, his fr- those are our friends who died in who World died, War II. Yeah. In World War II, though, you see, I right. could never know these names. I never heard them. Right. They all died at the age of 18. Uh-huh. So new information is what oh, helps absolutely. us uh, verify details. So, absolutely. The first, ahead, time I met, first time I met oh. Rebecca, let me tell a little story, how she convinced me. Um, she said that my mother was walking with some redhead named Lucille when, I, when she passed away. And I said, well, I had a Grandma Lou, but she was like white hair when I knew her. She was my grandma, so well, my cousin's grandma. And I said, but I don't think she ever had red hair, but I'll ask my cousin. So I called my cousin and I said, well, there was a redhead named Lucille walking with my mother. <laughs> and she was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Anyway, so, no. But she, she went, oh, well, Grandma Lou's twin sister's name was Lucille. Oh. And she had red hair. New information. <laughs> so, yeah, and so I didn't awesome. know that. But yeah. I, I followed up. I found the information. And then I, I got the That's great. the clear message that my mother was walking with Lucille. So, hey Lucille. So I named my I named my dog Lulu after Grandma Lou and Grandma Lucille. But they that. but that's the kind of information I like to get on this show too. And I think um sometimes um well, Rebecca's extremely good at this, but I but I what I would find fascinating is to see how you if you can do what you do with your psychics with Rebecca interview Rebecca and 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 see what her experience well is. well here's what I've been doing as of late and like I say because of my background and because as a filmmaker and a journalist I try to focus on what is going on mm-hmm. I try to focus on the consciousness part of it what's happening with our conscious minds that they could be a Dixie cup to the flip side mm-hmm. that they could actually communicate with our loved ones and ultimately I ask advice from those people on the other side 
hey, how can everybody talk to you? How can any person, and the, they don't have to have the mediumship ability, yes. but let's just say, what's a, what's a one, two, three? You know, and I go through that, those kinds of questions. But I also have been doing this thing with um, mediums recently, not just Jennifer, but a number of different people across the country um, and who, uh, you know, f they fall into my lap somehow. And on Skype, I do this thing where I ask them questions about their journey to the work. And what I found is, because memory, I think, is holographic, that we had, we tend to think of memory as two-dimensional, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I went to school yesterday, is what I right. ate for lunch. You only have, like, a single image of it. But but everything is is in that memory. It's like a three-, four-, five-dimensional experience. It's a great way of explaining it. So what I what I try to focus on is, okay, let's pick one. Let's pick some event. That's why I, I was saying to you on the phone, I've done this with near-death. People have had near-death experiences. Yes, yes. It's a dramatic thing. Mm -hmm. And I found that as we begin to talk about the event, I change it from past tense to present tense. So in Rebecca's case, as we sat down, I said, Rebecca, um, you know, what was your first conscious memory of, you know, being able to connect to spirit? And you mentioned that story about finding the dress. Mm -hmm. But I would like to focus on, if you don't mind. No, no. Yeah, I would like to focus on, um, you said that some individuals showed up. Yes, um, I've been, had a lot of paranormal activity my, almost my whole entire life. Wee! <laughs> and uh, um, I don't think I've ever told anybody this story, so you guys will the first one. When I was very young and... Um, About I, how old? Oh, I was young. Maybe I was, again, three, four years old, okay. five, six. No, I was younger than six. So I, uh, our family, I was raised Catholic, but, you know, I was so young. I didn't know anything about Catholicism. I'm not one who would believe in things people just tell me. I've always been someone who questioned if that was correct or not. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been a bit like a psychic detective, even at a young age. And so this is this is one that happened to me. I was visited, and this is going to sound out there, and I've never told anybody. I was visited by Mary of Nazareth, which is Jesus' mother. Very good. And she told me I would become a healer. Can I interrupt you? Mm -hmm. Do you mind? No. Please. Because this, this is what I try to focus on. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, and, and you know, for people tuning in, you have to allow that the mind has, works in mysterious and wonderful ways, and we're not trying to do change anybody's religion or belief or mm -hmm. anything. Else. We're just exploring by right. questions, mm -hmm. right? That's right. nothing wrong with that. Asking no. questions are okay. Yeah, no, and we all should. So, if you can, the the image of Mary, mm -hmm. can you see her in your mind's eye now? Yes. Okay, so do me a favor. I want mm -hmm. you to freeze that frame of that mm -hmm. experience. Tell me, what color hair does she have? She has a, a brown hair. It's very wavy and curly and pretty, mm -hmm. very soft that frames her face, like almost like a little sweetheart face. Mm -hmm. She has light eyes, blue eyes. Blue eyes. And she's fair-skinned. She's not olive at all, as far as so, I could see. How far away from you is she in this image? Uh, right in my, Right up to me. Like a, a foot away. Yeah. Okay. Can you see what she's wearing? Yes. She had um, a head, you know, one of those things. Cowl, yes. cowling things. Yeah. Um, blue. Blue. And she had white, white underneath that. Great. Do me a favor. I want you to reach out mm -hmm. and take both of her hands in your hands. Mm -hmm. Describe what that feels like to you. Just soft hands. Soft hands? Um, rather petite. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and what's the vibe you get? Is there any emotion attached to it? Oh, yeah. She's a human, for sure, the way she feels, mm -hmm. with a complete divine purpose. So she's human in nature. Okay, but I, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. What's the feeling? Oh, I feel like really like she could be my best friend or okay. my protector. Like a protect protection? But also like a friend, a really good friend. Is there any sense of familiarity? Yes, a little bit. Okay. Somebody you've known before. Right. Very familiar. Very familiar. Okay, mm -hmm. I want you to do me a favor. Mm -hmm. And if Mary doesn't mind. No, she won't mind. Okay, I'm going to ask mm -hmm. her some questions directly. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Again, not trying to disturb no, no, anybody's no. reality. No, but no. let's, first of all, I'd like Mary, if she, could, if she doesn't mind, mm -hmm. to focus for a second on letting you see from her perspective what you look like. What do you look like to her? 
A child. A child. Is there any color, light, or any kind of anything associated with that, or is it just you as you? No, I think she said I saw light pink light. Very good. Light pink light. Mm -hmm. Mary, would you mind showing her that light pink light? Is it a flat light? Like no. A, what's it? Describe it's, it. It's um, a luminescent. Mm -hmm. Does it have, does it vibrate? Does it yes, move? Yes, it's living color. It's a living color. And if you were going to describe about how high up the color goes, is it the size of you or higher? Or? Uh, well, it's it goes above me, but the more intense light is coming from my head up, maybe a couple of feet. A couple and of feet. And then it becomes okay. vibrating at a, a faster rate, but yet lighter in color. Excellent. And I just want you to know this mm -hmm. is a very common description of what people say. Oh. Different colors, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Light pink, you know, maybe associated with some color, but this is very common. So thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. And if you don't mind, she doesn't mind me calling her Mary, and I oh. hope your audience doesn't either. Mm -hmm. But let's, I want you to step back around again. Now focus on her. I want Mary to do us a favor. Mm -hmm. And this is going to sound weird. But I want her to change into some clothing mm -hmm. that seems more comfortable or familiar to you that, than what she's wearing. Because it's a religious thing that she's doing. Mm -hmm. And so you recognize her. But I'm saying, you know, give her ten tennies or, or jeans or ask her to change into something so it makes it more familiar. Well, you know what? Is that okay? I know, yes, I know where you're going with. But let me share something else that happened to me. Sure. I've seen her son three times. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying now... I have seen him in uh, a robe, a couple of different robes with different colors, but I did see him, and this is completely true, in a pair of jeans, a in blue a, um, alligator, you know, like a yeah, alligator like shirt. polo shirt. Polo shirt and, and, and tennis shoes. And can I tell you, mm -hmm. uh, please, I'm sorry to interrupt, but mm -hmm. if, if you do get a chance to look at Hacking the Afterlife, I do the same thing with him. Right. And he does change into jeans and a T-shirt sometimes. Right. Polo shirt? No, mm -hmm. that's new for me, but that's fine. Tennis shoes. <laughs> because here, the reason for that is is not to be irreligious. No. But it's to allow us to have a conversation. So, right. so let's – Mary can be, wear whatever she wants. But right. I, I, what I'd like to ask her is this. Why is it when people meet you and talk to you, you mm -hmm. kind of tend to say the same things mm -hmm. to people? What? Why is that? You say you talk about love. Mm -hmm. You talk about. I mean, generally, people report. You know, like the girls at Fatima, they report certain particular. But so, what is it you'd like to impart? No, Mary talks about being human, very human. Okay. And she was, and she talks about being a young girl as a child that was brought into a situation that she didn't expect. Her mother also, I believe, she talks about her mom, Anne, a lot. Mm -hmm. And her mother was actually married three times. So there, there's information about her childhood. She likes to be called Mary of Nazareth. She doesn't call by the Virgin Mary. I mean, you can call her whatever you want. Yeah. But she likes to be called by Mary of Nazareth. Okay. And also she talked about, you know, her, her, her upbringing, her childhood, the normality of it with this complete divine purpose. Well, let me ask you, Mary, if you don't mind me mm -hmm. calling you Mary. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever incarnated since you were uh, on the planet? She said many times. Many times. And could you just pick one to sort of just to give us an example of some lifetime that you chose that might have had some significance to the lifetime you chose then mm -hmm. and the lifetime you chose later on? Was there any lifetime that you chose that was kind of helped you in your formation of who you are as a person? I don't know. Let me ask her. She keeps saying 1973. Okay. All right. And, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's fine. And Mary, would you show um, Rebecca what you mean by 1973? Was there a person involved, a male or female? Well, this is her answer that she's many times become other people in situations that were completely normal. Mm -hmm. And for her, she is so enlightened by the light of God that she will come in various human forms, not for the purpose of her learning more, maybe, but helping Teaching. others. Teaching. Teaching. Yeah, she's yeah, a yeah, teacher. that's fine. And I've seen that quite often with mm -hmm. teachers. Yeah. Because they do show up to help people in the right. path and the journey. And I, I, the only reason I ask is uh, sometimes, you know, th th there's a specific lifetime they want to impart. And in her case, she would like to impart more Nin that she's 
Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. 1973 in Texas. So she said there was uh, some event in Texas that needed her immediate divine intervention. Okay, very good. I'm not exactly sure what went on. Was she a man or a woman in that lifetime? She was. Well, she identifies. She said neither, but she identifies more <laughs> with being a female. That's She's okay. an it. She was an it before it became it. <laughs> no, I, or they. I, or they. I understand. <laughs> but it's also, it's also a way of not disconcerting people. Right. Because if she said, yeah, I was a man, but I was gay, that would freak people out. No. But let's just allow, let's just allow that right. whatever she's saying, let's just allow that to be her Sorry. thing. So just Sorry, Mary, I had to throw my two cents in there. <laughs> well, let me just then ask you this, which is, and I know Mary's busy, and I know there's people that inter- she has to intercede well, on. Well, she said, I'm never too busy. Okay, very Aww. good. Well, uh, would you, is there, is there something you'd like to impart to the people listening in mm-hmm. um, uh, for, that could help them on their path? A lot of people struggling. A lot of people suffering, as we know, and a lot of people on are calling this, your name. On this particular day, which this podcast will be launched, which is Christmas Day. Oh, very oh, good. Oh. As a matter of fact. Well, that's a happy day. So, <laughs> Merry but, Christmas. But Mary, everyone. anything yes. you want to impart to, the, to the, your fans? Um, yeah, she's, um, she says that human suffering is hard to understand. Mm-hmm. Um, as her human self she had struggles with it also at the at the bottom of the cross of her child suffering and she says her child her pain was as real as any suffering but she had such divine intervention prior to that that she had to believe there was a purpose in this but did she cry oh it's making me sad she was crying she was horrified watching her child who she saw grow up being crucified in a heinous way. Yes. So she says to tell people, I identify with people who are suffering and especially with people who have lost their children. Now, Mary, would you like me to impart to the audience what I've learned, what happened to your son after the crucifixion? Or yes. is that, yes, you want mm-hmm. me to? Okay, yes. well, let me ask you, Mary. So is it true mm-hmm. that he survived the crucifixion and went with you mm-hmm. back to India and that you passed away in Pakistan? Well, you know, it's funny. I heard her say something about India. Oh, so much. I'm not going to say she said no, because there are many mysteries about how he may have survived after and how he would have appeared. But she says there is some truth. Very good. Thank you, <laughs> Mary. I always like wow. to get validation from Mary. Mm-hmm. Now, listen, we could go into this. It's a whole other thing. But it's Christmas. We were Let's talking just... about India yeah. earlier as well. Oh, were you? Yeah. Well, all I can tell you is, and we talk, we talk about it in Hacking the Afterlife, mm-hmm. but basically through what I'm doing, but also other people have approached me out of nowhere, right. out of the blue, who either w- witnessed the crucifixion, mm-hmm. a, a guy from India just happened to call me out of the blue and said, I got to tell you, you know, mm-hmm. and other people who happened to have been there witnessed the, and then one woman in South Carolina contacted me who, who felt, and, and we did this fully conscious. She wasn't under hypnosis at all. She remembered being his pal when he was a young man. Well, let me tell you really quickly. People will get this. I'll say it quickly. I had a gentleman in my office. I didn't remember he was an actor. Mm-hmm. I know he didn't come to me to talk about Jesus, of course, and I knew that. But I said, let me tell you very quickly. Jesus is here. I call him the handsome. I call him actually the hot Jew. Okay? And I said he wants to tell you about his life as a child, who he played with, who was his best friend, what toys he plays oh, with. Cool. And he really is insisting. He goes, oh, well, you know, Rebecca. I don't really care because I'm a Muslim. I go, what does not matter? I was a Catholic. I am a Catholic. You're a Muslim and he's a Jew. But please take the information down and then I'll tell you why you really came here and I'll tell you what you want to hear. One year later, he come back to me and he said, Rebecca, I get it now. I know why you said that. I got picked to play Jesus Christ on the (laughs) Easter special. And guess what? It hit the news. The Muslim playing the Jew. Now, there are other things about him (laughs) that I will not reveal. And if people knew, then he'd say... You'd know who this guy was. Yes. Yeah, no, and honestly, and Jennifer uh, and I have talked mm-hmm. about this quite a bit, and um, th- here's the premise. If it's true what I'm saying, mm-hmm. that people don't die, mm-hmm. that they're always accessible, right. then therefore, and the, you know, of course, if you have 100 people say the same things about a person mm-hmm. who's no longer on the planet, well, mm-hmm. that's accessible. And it, whether, however they're accessible is not relevant. But what is relevant mm-hmm. is that every time they run into this guy, that guy, mm-hmm. 
and and Jennifer's one of them. I I when I first interviewed yes. Jennifer that night the, the day that we did the Amelia Earhart session mm-hmm. at some point as if that wasn't enough <laughs> <laughs> at some point in our interview she said I and I asked her is it possible I just randomly said is it possible for us to bring someone forth like and she saw him in the distance and I said could you bring him forward can he wa-? and as he got closer quote unquote she, her face turned beet red. Her eyes welled with tears. She couldn't breathe. Okay. Now, that was the third person that I'd had this experience with, one under deep hypnosis and one another medium. And I said, Jesus, what the heck are you? Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Like Jesus, just switched off. I said, what the heck are you doing scaring you the heck said, out of this? You said, turn your light down. Turn That's your light. what you were saying. <laughs> Thank the you. light just went off. All right, very good. No, but I asked, I said, what's up, dude? What are you doing? You're scaring these women. You're that making them choke. Funny. What's wrong with you? I did that because I thought, you know, if she reacts like, are you crazy? No, but her thing was, she immediately said, oh, it's just because of the way I'm constructed. I'm closer to source, and so mm-hmm. uh, there's more of the feeling of unconditional love around me, and that's why people have that reaction. I went, okay, could you back up like five feet, please? <laughs> and then from that point forward, we had an interview just like we did with Amelia where I asked him details about yes. things that I'd already heard. And I must tell you, since then, I've had a dozen other people, medium sometimes, um, a medium that I met with, I told you about her, and she saw him there and did the same thing with the, you know, can you change into shorts, <laughs> Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> but, but essentially, what's, I mean, that's all fun, but essentially he's saying the same thing, which is my journey on the planet was about teaching unconditional love. We live on a planet that doesn't have it. Right. We have conditional love here. If you like me, I'll like you. Right. If you shoot at me, <laughs> I true. won't, you know. But unconditional love, we can find it with parents and children sometimes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and sometimes with animals, sometimes. Right. Yeah. But the experience that people who have near-death events and people under deep hypnosis that's consistent over all the people that I've interviewed and seen and studied, they talk about being home after life, where they go home where they experience mm-hmm. unconditional love. So that's the normal state of being. So let's just say, let's just allow this for a second, that what Jesus is talking about when he was here was, hey, my kingdom, my realm that I'm from, where I came from, that I have access to, that's where unconditional love is. There's no higher, there's no lower, everyone's equal. So treat people like that and you will experience Right. I must tell you, there was one, I'm sorry, I, but, but there was this, I was doing an interview with a skeptic, a woman, a film producer who had, didn't want to do the session, blah, blah, blah. At some point, her skeptical question was, who or what is God? And her guide said, oh, you humans with your questions. <laughs> um, listen, God is beyond the capacity of the human brain to comprehend. It's just not physically possible for you to do so. However, if you want to experience God, you can do that. And the way mm-hmm. to do that is to open your heart mm-hmm. to everyone and everything. So what's that? That's unconditional love. Well, I noticed when I um, actually saw Jesus in a physical form, and uh, my friend, we were in uh, the gift shop at the San Fernando Mission, and my (laughs) friend said to me, who's totally hated Catholic school, (laughs) sorry, Tracy, you know you did, and she goes, Rebecca, Rebecca, and I took her there to ask for a miracle for her to be able to get a house. She goes, Jesus is in the bookstore. I go, oh, ha, ha. yeah, right, Tracy, Miss, Miss Un, you know, religious at all. So I go, I went in there, and um, I, I saw him. I like, we both were like, I go, oh my god, oh my Wait, god. Wait, you saw someone who looked like him? No, no, no. she's this clairvoyant is, too. No, no. She said, Rebecca, no. <laughs> Wait, what? Yes, no, this is a true story. Wait, you so, saw I saw a guy she, that looked like Jesus. She said, Jesus <laughs> is in the bookstore. Oh, and I okay. started laughing so hard. So I went in the bookstore and I go, oh, my God. Okay. So I am a, normally, I'm a shy person. I don't know if you guys know that, but I am normally a very shy person, right? A little bit. So I said... <laughs> Oh my God, I'm going to stalk him. Okay. So I stalked him while he was walking around and I cornered him. 
That's not like me. I do not corner strangers. Mm -hmm. And I corner. Was he dead? No, he was alive. He had jeans on and the blue shirt. And I've seen an <laughs> angel with the red shirt with the same alligator on there. Are you guys so, having mimosas beforehand? No, this no that is would a true be for me. <laughs> but listen to this, you guys. So anyway, I cornered him and I, I got right in his face. And I go, did anyone ever tell you, you look just like Jesus? And he did not answer me. Jesus is quite humble. Mm -hmm. But the love is so non-human that we cannot feel that love because we're contained. Our love is contained. We're like in a wetsuit with little rays of love. His love was undescribable. And God has come to me before. And I said to God, hey, God. I'm ever going to see you in the hole. Like, I want to see what you look like. And he said, no, Rebecca, you're not. You will see me in many different places, in many different faces. And that is the face of God. Cool. And that's what I've had. <laughs> and that is a true story about Jesus. Well, you know, I would always offer, and, mm -hmm. and just for the sake you're of... you're Buddhist, the, you're, correct? <laughs> well, no, I, I've, I've studied a lot of Buddhism, and I've mm -hmm. been to India and Tibet and made documentaries there and stuff. And I, I find that Buddhism as a... It's a philosophy. It's not right. a religion. Mm -hmm. As a philosophy, it's peerless when it comes to talking about the nature of reality. Right. No question about it. But when it comes to spirituality, eh, they kind of have some other... Um, Tibetan Book of the Dead. Mm -hmm. right. If you examine it really carefully, you'll find... Mm -hmm that they don't – what I found is the opposite of that, which is that uh, – this is what people say under deep hypnosis. About a third of our energy, mm -hmm. our soul energy, comes to our lifetime. Right. Two-thirds of our soul energy is always back home. And when we die, we reconnect with that two-thirds. And that's how we then suddenly remember all of our lifetimes. But that – that's so that's a, a, not a finite – uh, energetic system because it's always growing and learning and growing and learning just the way we are. It's just a different system, you see? So that's contrary to Buddhist philosophy or dogma or, and, or reincarnation theory because in this work that I've been doing, people claim mm -hmm. consistently and it's reproducible, which is what science asks, that we choose our lifetime. Oh, we do. So. A hundred percent. I had a conversation with God. I said he called me in. I went and talked to him. Well, here's my point, Rebecca. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. As soon mm -hmm. as you say I had a conversation with God, there's a brain freeze that goes on with people. You know you're a Catholic. I'm a Catholic. I grew well, up Catholic. You mm -hmm. say, I saw Jesus. I saw God. I saw Mary. They go into a brain freeze. <laughs> so I'm just trying. You have to allow, at least here's what I'm saying with Rebecca and I talk about this all the mm -hmm. time, which is just try to allow. I had the impression. Mm -hmm. If you throw that into a sentence, then you can say anything. This was my experience where mm -hmm. it felt like I talked to God. Well, in this see? case, Tracy and I always say, we saw Jesus in the San Fernando bookstore. <laughs> I believe well, that's funny. I mean, it's, it's yeah. hilarious. But, and, oh, and he's, he's well, really we cute. Can, but we <laughs> could see, we can ask Jesus. Uh -huh. That's my point. We mm -hmm. can ask him, dude, were you in the San Fernando bookstore? Or was that somebody else? That, <laughs> yeah. no, no. So we can, if, All right. we can this ask. Is, this is getting way out of control yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. oh, no, I just, Merry Christmas, everyone. Okay, yeah, and right, we're right. done. No, okay. All right, go, let's go, let's go back to the topic at hand. But you know what I want to do? I want to do something really quick just because we're we we have a bunch of people listening and that that are calling in that want to yeah i, I want to see let you see how rebecca works cool yeah. um because you know she's really good at what she does and you know how jennifer works she's amazing yeah um but i'm going to take a couple of calls just because you know they're they're all listening and they're all staying with me for hour when a hours. couple of them have been here for an hour <laughs> it's but, been a um, slumber party the but there's one that's been on the longest, and her name is Diane. Hey, Diane. Hi, Hello? Diane. How are Hi, you? Jan. Thank you for waiting. Hi. Waiting. We really appreciate you no, calling. No problem. So, it was worth it. <laughs> was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to let – I'm going to let uh, – let, let me think. Um, so I'm going to give you a few clues, Rebecca, okay, mm -hmm. just to okay. set you in the right direction. Um, her – she's – she has a sister appearing in her dreams mm -hmm. and she's she's curious like how to uh to figure out what these dreams mean and if if it's sometimes you know you get you know she, some are fearful and some are comforting so she's just a little concerned you know with the way that dreams are coming across okay the first thing i'm looking at is i think that if there is something fearful there is um What's predicted is preventable. We haven't been educated enough 
in this century or maybe the one before this is how to interpret the communication from the divine or the different dimensions. So I would interpret what you fear is take a good look at the details of that dream. I had a dream about the Northridge earthquake. I was warned. I looked at every detail of that dream, and I was able to be dressed and waiting and save my kids, and I lived very close to the epicenter. So I'm asking you now to look at that dream, dream in the way of your fear. Can you give me any details that you saw in that dream? And I'll tell you what she wants to tell you. Okay, there's been um, a few dreams about me losing a child, and this is brand newborn baby, um, because I know that she knows in the afterlife that I want to have a child. Mm -hmm. um, I've been married for two years, and I need to go through a process in order to be able to have a child with my new husband. But in my dream, I see that um, I see twins, I see losing one, and then um, I see myself like overwhelmed about trying to save this baby. Okay. And um, different episodes that I lose a little boy and there's so much tragedy, like, it's so overwhelming to even explain. Well, and first, she's just trying to tell me, please well, save, you know. Uh, I think she's trying to tell you that there is a possibility of having twins, but you probably need to, and Susan's more versed on multiple births than I am. But I also am saying to say, look at look at the process that you're doing to get pregnant. And uh, again, mm -hmm. if there's any kind of process where you could be possibly to having more than one birth, which is a big, big possibility, that you have to have the best of the best to watch over you. And um, to be able to not be afraid of having a child, but because she's showing the possibilities of an right. occurrence, which you don't want to become fearful with, you want to be proactive with. Can, can I interject real fast, yeah. just because of the dreams, okay. the dream part of it? Mm -hmm. um, I had a dream about my dad, and in the process of my dad showing up, he was in great shape. My dad was a runner. He was up, you know, up at the top of this hill, and he was going to go for a run. And I remember, I'm like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden I started looking for my kids, I felt like I, because my subconscious deals with my kids not being picked up or not doing like my because of how busy I am, my subconscious is worried constantly and fearful about carpool. Do not make fun of me. So that came into my dream state. OK, so the real part was my dad. The part that I fear the most of not being able to be for, there for my kids, that's the part that came up after that. And then my dad went away. So right. I could have taken it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And what I feel and what Rebecca has said is that you're the, she's showing you twins and then you put your fear in there and then that happens. Does that make sense? All right. Then let me add the, uh, the, the third yeah. point of view, which I think okay. this is great. The, and from my perspective, I go right to... Um, details of the dream, what, what part of it is your own, what part of it is from somebody else. And you can explore that through deep hypnosis, by having somebody talk to you about that. It's very possible okay. that you're remembering an event. That's a possibility. That's true. In a yeah. previous the, lifetime. In a previous lifetime right. where you lost a child, let's say, and you're remembering that. So there's a fear associated with having children because you remember that event. But listen, that's... There is a fear of having children. So, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Me too. But, <laughs> but let's just allow one. Let me try to give you a little piece of advice that's proactive so that you can access this information. So what well, the good part of this story is that it's your sister, that you're accessing your sister, okay. you're seeing her. And so what I want you to do is just either say her name aloud or in your head or take a photograph out that's of you and her when she was happy and alive and in your presence so you can access the energy of who she was, okay, or who she is. And then I want you to make a list of questions. Just whatever those questions are, whatever the thing that comes to mind, try to ask her questions you don't know the answer to, but try not to make them too emotional. But try to make them, like, like I'm saying, like a detective. So are you really there or where are you, stuff like that. That, you know, she can answer, mm -hmm. I'm with you. But you can ask her, like, you know, where are the keys to the car or where you can say things that you don't know the answer to. And the advice that, that uh, Jennifer and I got from the flip side is that when they answer the question before you can form it, then you'll know you uh -huh. have a connection. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, is AJ still around or no? Yeah. Is he gone? <laughs> no, he had to go. No, but I, I had just, to go. Yeah, I just because re- when she mm-hmm. when she passed away, it, it indicate and in leaving a message that she was pregnant. Oh. So her fiance and I felt like she was pregnant because oh. she left a test behind and said positive. Well, so listen, I don't know. Listen, what we've learned in our research, and and every I'm sure yeah. you know people agree with this. It's mm-hmm. and it's difficult to hear, but it's really kind of in the research, which is people don't die. Their energy doesn't die. When a baby is about to be born mm-hmm. and doesn't make it here, the baby doesn't mm-hmm. disappear. The energy goes back home, and that energy is always with you and always accessible and right. always there and may show up. And I, if you look at Carol Bowman's work, uh, children's past lives. Yeah. Sometimes that baby that was going to be here shows up, like in the neighbor, the neighbor house, <laughs> and the kid says, "You know, I was in uh, your tummy first, and then I wasn't, but now I was born, and I just wanted to tell you I love you and I miss you." Aww. So you'll find, awesome. if you allow, I totally that. believe what you're saying. Okay, yeah. well, very good. I, okay. But I'm saying it's in the research. You know, it's not a matter of belief for me. For me, it's. It's if the data consistently says the same thing. Same thing over and over again. Yeah. Over and over again, mm-hmm. then it's allow that it's a, a possibility scientific. that your sister not only exists, but your children who are mm-hmm. waiting for you to get over your fears right. so they can get here. And there's nothing wrong with having fears. That means you're going to be a great mom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I believe that you'll, I kids. you'll get the best doctors. I feel kind of like an empty nest in a way because I have um, adult kids and my last one's about to be 17. Oh. And so... I'm wow. needing that. So okay. you're you're going to yeah. have in vitro or something? Or are you going to have some kind of? Um, My husband wants a reversal, but um, I, I don't know which way to go. That's why I'm trying to like. Ask my sister or God, what what is it that you want me to do? Because I'm desperately want these babies. I really do. Okay. I don't well, know what to do. Rebecca's probably yeah. the only one who can, or, or Jen, or the one can tell you and if trust it's your good heart. or bad. <laughs> trust your heart. Mm-hmm. Your heart will, will show well, you the way. My, my, my thought was, look at, I had a feeling there would be some process that you'd have to go through. And in doing this, mm-hmm. look at the pros and cons, get rid of your fear, and get the best of the best. And if you really want this child, then, you know, then go for it. But there are some, you know, there are. In every pregnancy, right. there's some liability. Right. You, if you do have to have artificial insemination, there's a good chance you could have twins, mm-hmm. or you could lose one in in utero because right. you know they don't always make it, mm-hmm. especially if there's more than mm-hmm. one, and or they it could mm-hmm. come out and you could have problems. I mean, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, and it, that, that's a a valid thing to worry about when you're having in vitro. I was impregnated and had four take. And mm. when they told me, you know, they said, well, you should pr- probably reduce to two because there's a good chance that you're going to have problems with this pregnancy and the rest of your life. So, and I didn't do it, but one of the babies just sort of dropped out in a ghost. It was a very, you know, a, like 10 weeks or whatever. But, you know, ever since all three were born, you know, I, you, multiples, you have to worry about the outcome, especially if you're older. And it's uh, it's just a it's yeah. a very difficult sure. thing to go through. You have to be on the hormone therapy. It's very expensive. It doesn't always work right away, and there are a lot of fears that go into it before the baby's born. And, so, and by the way, if I have friends. Sorry to interrupt, but people who adopt, even in those cases, I've done interviews with these people under deep hypnosis, and they see the child that they adopted in a previous lifetime right. had mm-hmm. been looking for them. So right, right. You have to allow that the magic of what birth is 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 in your world and allow it to come however it comes. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if you want to do it, do it. If it, But it's not going to be easy, just so you know, because I've been through it. It's not the easiest yeah. process. And it's, you know, because you have to go on the hormone therapy for a month, and you have to have the eggs retrieved, and then they have to implant them, and then you have to stand on your head, and then you have, <laughs> and then you have, and then the, they have to take, and then your hormones yeah. are, are screwed up, and you're, you may be bedridden because mm-hmm. you have multiples, and then... You know, it's just, it's a lot of stress on everybody. So you have to make sure your sister may be telling you that it's not going to be a walk in the park. Okay. And to be prepared. And it's not, it's not easy. Having one kid naturally is not a walk in the park. My nightmares are carpool. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And I work on murder cases. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I hope that's helpful. Um, I mean, I, I hope that you, only the best and have a great holiday. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay, so um, I have Christine on the line. Hi, Christine. 
Hi. <laughs> Hola, sister, nos queremos ir. Oh. Where, where is it? El Lip. Oh. Is she calling us from the flip side? Oh, no, I've got two people on at once. I have Christine and Maribel. Hola. Hola. I'm Christine Bernie. Okay, so I got two people on the line at the same time. <laughs> only, only here. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this really quick. Hi. Oh, this is the quiet one. Hi, Christine. Oops. Hi. Hi. I, I, yeah, the other one was too noisy in the background. I'm glad I. She. It sounded like she was having a harmonica lessons back there. <laughs> we're, looking, we're looking for AJ. I know. I. Yeah. Forget it. AJ's gone. So I know you guys have been on since AJ. But um, okay. So I'm here with Rebecca and Jennifer Schaefer and Rich Martini, and we're. I. You've been listening for so long. I understand. Um. Anyways, I'll have I'll have Rebecca talk to Christine and get started. Hi, Christine. How are you? Hi, fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Okay, so um, is there any specific question, or you want me to just go in cold turkey and see what I see? Um, we can try cold turkey on my message. I put. I uh, don't tell. Don't tell, her, don't tell her. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. Don't tell her. I'm not, you don't I'm have to let tell her me. Go cold t- turkey. So yeah. she can get it. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd rather. I think I'd rather go cold turkey because I have many, many family members that have passed on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she just read what she said on here. So. No, I didn't read it. I just, no, that's not, I didn't. Um, the first thing, because I do this on, on, I don't usually ask people questions, so let me just kind of go in there and see what I see. And Jennifer's here. She can back okay. me up. And also Mr. Martini. He's here in Susan. So, and Drew oh, is back there oh. somewhere. I'm but just anyway. up the phones. Don't worry about me. <laughs> okay, now the first thing is there's this gentleman standing right behind you. He's a nice looking man. He's more dark haired than a blonde he came dressed nice for you but a sweater maybe no tie but definitely not jeans and a t-shirt um he told me to tell you that he often comes to your kitchen uh he loves the kitchen for some reason and he tells me to tell you that there's amazing amazing food in heaven but he does miss sharing a meal with you or having a cup of coffee just the simple things in life actually i don't know his name yet but he's a little overwhelmed he's tearing up in a good way and he wanted you to tell Tell you that believe oh. that he's there when he's there. Don't question it. It's not your imagination. He's tried to touch you a little bit. He, he somehow this guy loves the kitchen. Okay, and he told me to tell you <laughs> that um, it's okay if you buy new things that make you happy. So you're not a greedy person and you're not an, an overspender. But please don't feel guilty. And um, <laughs> and he's t- can he come over to my house? <laughs> I just got some new knives in the kitchen <laughs> i'm sure he'll say you deserve them <laughs> poor drew he's passed uh-huh. out in the corner okay keep going. and also he told me to tell you and this might not be a name that you de- definitely are associating with right now it's a common name but he's insisting he's saying it over and over again james james jim jimmy does that mean anything to you and if it doesn't please take it down and note it Yes, I have a brother, Jimmy, that passed away when I was five. He was seven. He's here. Uh, I don't know whether that's him. No, that's it. Because the gentleman... My dad no. is also named Jim and everything you said. Oh. Actually correlated with my dad. Uh, I don't know, though. Let uh, me see. Yeah, this is hers. He's Let dead. Me Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It could be, but this is... no. Well, maybe we got Jimmy and James together. No, no, no. This is for this woman. Okay, let me go. I'll get her dad. Her dad likes me. He'll come through. No, but this is... The, the person, the man that I'm talking to is not Jimmy. He is insisting that I talk about Jimmy because you have to know that Jimmy oh. is alive and well. And w- this gentleman knew in your family that this was a big loss when Jimmy died. So he's just wanting me to know that he brought Jimmy with him. <laughs> Maybe James brought Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jimmy is not. The man I'm talking to is not Jimmy or James. Oh, okay. Jimmy is her brother. Okay. And we also. Yes, okay, that. That would make more sense because the man I'm talking to is in your yes. kitchen, is an older man, not old, but he's older than Jimmy's young. He also, because he's trying to prove I to you. I know who he is. Yeah. And he's trying to prove to you that there is life after death. I have physical evidence of that now through technology um, that I can 
tell you 100% without being just a medium that heaven and many dimensions do exist. They're going to try to give you signs, but it's so nice. They're bringing you the prettiest roses and putting them on your table. So these two are eating good. They're running around. They're alive. They want you to know that your mom is good. I don't even know if she's on the other side, but they said mom is good. <laughs> so I'm going with that. And she is that- that was about, that was my original question about my mom because she passed here with me in my house, mm-hmm. and I just wanted to make sure she was with oh, Jimmy, my she, brother, she's and, the, with Jimmy. and my other two brothers. Mm-hmm. They're all oh. together. Oh. There's Jimmy and Mom, and probably one of the nice looking guys I'm talking to is your brother who did have some age on him when he passed. But I'm just going to tell you, they're good. They're good to go. They're eating. Your mom might maybe she yeah. was a good cook. I don't know. Maybe they're happy that she's there. <laughs> but let me tell you something you gave her a pleasant passing you gave her enough that she didn't have to suffer towards the end of her life she's in the garden okay she's there she's alive she's well she loves you just to believe it to be true you don't even need proof just to believe it to be true that's what she told me to tell you and by the way she thinks she's telling everybody my daughter has the biggest heart that you can imagine so never give that up okay (laughs) never give up that big heart that you have oh i hope that helps i hope hope you have a great holiday and thank you for waiting on hold so long i'm glad we made the yes and let me tell you something she's giving me something amazing with the yummiest frosting i've ever had (laughs) (laughs) making me hungry maybe she wants you to go have it yeah Yeah, i don't know sometimes people know carrot cake Uh uh-huh I think the person, the gentleman that you're talking about in my kitchen could either be my brother or my stepdad that I looked at as the father, the only stepdad Mm -hmm. I ever felt like was my father. Mm -hmm. It could be him because he's an older gentleman, a dapper Dan, and my brother was in his... um, like late twenties when he passed, oh my and goodness. him and I were very close. But I got a feeling that it's it's my stepdad. Yeah, maybe because he told me to tell is- you that mom was good, not to worry, and he's dressed nice. He's actually very nicely dressed, but no tie. But he keeps bringing up that you should be um, nice. Um, to Michael because he's a good person, but you make your own decision on that. I don't want to tell you what to do. Are you aware who Michael is yet? No. You okay. will. You will, but don't take that lightly. You make your own decision. I have a feeling it might be the next caller I'm about to take. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. Okay, well, uh, maybe I'm supposed to be nice to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, hey. Okay, well, thanks for calling in. We really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You have a great evening. So have a great evening. evening. Okay. You have a wonderful Happy holiday season, all of you. Thank you very, very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Okay, Thank so... Thank you. So we have... Uh, we have... Uh, Jason on the line... Let's see. We have to. I have to do something. Jason, I hope he's not asleep. Yes, ma'am. Do you know Michael? I do not. Oh, no. It's okay, not it's not you. Damn! <laughs> I was just hoping maybe I was psychic and I could find somebody. Because if it didn't, it pl- I was about to push the button on Jason, and I thought, okay, he must know Michael. No, it's probably the lady. Oh, okay. Uh, my brother's name is Michael. Oh, oh, oh! oh I don't oh. know Michael. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Let me think. Do you know Michael? <laughs> I do. <laughs> you were right, Susan. Did They're you right. say your brother's <laughs> name was Michael? Did yeah. he pass away? Is that what you're saying? Or your brother's name is? Uh, Michael? No, he's alive. Is oh, he said alive. is okay, not, not was? Oh, I is. thought you were. You know. <laughs> okay, he's, he's an asshole. <laughs> I'm like, he's an asshole. I was not going to say that. I'm like, that's why I was Yeah, nobody like likes him. But. Nobody <laughs> likes him. That's funny. This is so funny because I have to tell nobody you. Nobody in my family likes him. Oh, I told yeah. you it was Jason. I, I think everybody Michael. has one of those. <laughs> See, it's funny because like I was going, okay, the next one's going to be Jason. Next one's going to be Jason. And the minute she said, oh, well, I don't know Michael. I go, well, I know somebody who might. <laughs> so I didn't know his name was Michael, but I was guessing. So you didn't guess. You got it. That I was already on to Michael, who nobody likes, and I heard try to be nice to him. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) okay. So whatever. (laughs) It's it's Christmas, Jason. (laughs) (laughs) Funny. Oh my God. So how are you, Jason? I'm. I I am actually stodgy compared uh, from what 
Susan says. Uh, uh, yes, you are. And I know you have to go to bed because you have to be up at 5 in the morning, right? Or do you have the day off tomorrow? I do. Yes. Uh, four. But yeah. So I wanted to say hi and thanks for mm-hmm. listening. I don't. I mean, if you want, Rebecca can give you a quick synopsis of your life. I don't know if you know who this, but I'm not going to say anything. Well, I'll just tell you. I feel the East Coast around you have no. I have no idea where you're located, but you will find yourself in the East rather than the West, mm-hmm. and um, it'll be a karmic connection there that you've lived there many, many lifetimes over. As Mr. Martini was talking about how we have these. Well, he was he's a very interesting gentleman, actually, and was kind of giving a new twist to me about past lives mm-hmm. and our memory banks, which are very unusual and, and, and actually much more intelligent than what we know. <laughs> so you mean in terms, of the, uh, in terms of memories of our previous lifetimes? Yes. Yeah. I, it's mm-hmm. a very unusual you know, form of research, but mm-hmm. what I'm finding mm-hmm. is that um, you know, the brain stores memories, as mm-hmm. we know, but it's almost as if there's a mirror image to all those memories somewhere else. Right. It's true. Because if mm-hmm. you look at uh, – there's a guy, a friend of mine, Dr. Bruce Grayson. He's at the University of Virginia. And he's been studying this for quite some time. Mm. And he does a, a, a talk on YouTube called Is mm. Consciousness Produced by the Brain? And he shows these medical cases of people – either who were, who were dead, mm-hmm. and then they came back and they had consciousness, mm-hmm. but also Alzheimer's patients in London right. who they suddenly recover all their memory briefly for a few minutes, a few hours, maybe a day, mm-hmm. prior to passing away. Right. And when they do the autopsy, um, they shouldn't have been able to communicate. But, and so what's happening is it's almost as if the filters that are in the brain that, don't pr- that prevent us from accessing that other information right. die when the brain dies. And so suddenly we're able to catch all that other stuff and see all those other things. Yes, it's very interesting so. um, the way that you describe things because a lot of people don't actually talk about that stuff. And it's funny because I, when I see East Coast, I don't mean New York. I mean um, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware. I don't know. He will have a connection to these areas. With Jason, I'm finding, and don't take this personal, Jason, <coughs> is the love life. Okay, I'm picking up a lot about your love life, okay? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here comes Damn. the juicy stuff, listeners. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready Rebecca, for this? Rebecca. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? We've had. We've had. Okay, don't a, tell her. Uh, don't tell her anything. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. oh, I didn't Shh, recognize you at all. Let's talk about your love life. Okay, okay. what's it going to be? Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't get okay. me. I like to just go in there, right. cold turkey. Okay, Jason. In a... In a <laughs> Go in there. This is going to get a little juicy, Jason. Okay, I want to hear this. <laughs> Sorry. In, in a past Sorry. life, in a past life, you had many multiple affairs. Okay, and I um, don't. and you were very charming and very handsome. But you disappointed <laughs> a couple of ladies. So you have to remember in this lifetime that a, just a natural courtship take place because when you in some. In some societies, it's unnatural to have many, many lovers. Some, it's not. You know, you can have many wives. <laughs> You're but, a complete douche. Yeah, back but then. <laughs> <laughs> no, he might have had a I'm lot. A douche. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's okay. not now. I don't think. But he's here now. Where I think it's illegal to have more than one wife. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay, but anyway. So my thing for you is when you find a woman that allows you to court her properly, when you understand. As I'm choking here, as okay. uh, when you can understand a little more about the feminine energy, because when we go with nature and you understand how to engage in her femininity, then she will celebrate your masculinity. So if you come off a little controlling or somebody who is somebody who won't engage in her her things that she likes and wants to do, then you're going to have trouble with this, okay? You are, uh, you're sort of a little bit of an alpha male, and so you have to have somebody that can, bit. Yeah, <laughs> they can understand that, right? That they're not intimidated or they'll go, oh, my <laughs> God, bit, Ugh, no, go away, okay? You, so, got, you also get bored. Yeah, and so we want to, I want to help you with this. When you meet a woman, remember this, and you like her a lot and you want to be more involved with her, go friendship into love, love into in love in love to emotional intimacy, right? Then we get into 
engaging in sensuality, sexuality, and fantasy. Now, sex with a woman should be an expression of love. And that she's okay if you bring out the whipped cream and cherries. Okay, guys? Okay? And if you ask her, even if she's a housewife, how's your day? This is a big job you have, honey. You will always have sex. Okay? I do thousands of readings. And women don't want to have sex with you anymore. When you're not engaging in their emotional okay. well-being and independence. I want Jennifer to step in on this. Yes. <laughs> so what do you think? He's a bit of an alpha male. I'm still, I'm still thinking about the whipped cream. Just okay. give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait for that, okay? The cherry on top comes way down the line. I'm, like, I'm trying to follow you. I'm like, wait. And he is from the east, by the way, sort yeah, of, right? From oh. the east coast. Yeah, and he needs to go to bed. I mean, so. do, you have two, do you have two relationships right now or two people that you're interested in? I have none. You have none. So they're past relationships. None. Okay. Okay. I have. You are so busy, though. Almost <laughs> given up on women. No, no, no. Nope. Don't do that. Don't, Don't. do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. here. I She's said, here. <laughs> I said a little bit earlier that you get bored pretty fast, correct? And because you're super busy? Uh, I'm, I'm just sick of trying. Mm -hmm. uh. Okay. I try and try and try, and try and try and try and nothing happens. So well, I I think Jennifer, why give you a take I even on this. Care? Okay, that's a different question. Mm -hmm. Let me take that one. Okay, yeah, go <laughs> ahead, Mr. Martini. So, Jason, I, I, I don't know you, bro, and but I understand what you're saying, and it's a little more, a little bit of a different uh, concept of not just uh, should I try to find a girl or so, you know a, a soulmate. It's like why am I not finding a soulmate? What am I doing here? So this is what I find in my right. re in my research, and like I say, it's based on thousands of cases and 45 that I filmed. They all claim that before we come to the planet, we have a plan that we work out with our soulmates, people that we normally incarnate with. So then the question is, well, where the heck are they? All right, that's the question. And while before you get here, you may have made this agreement with somebody that is your primary soulmate, the person you normally are connected to, you may have said, you know what, let's not hook up this lifetime because I want to go explore and do some other stuff. <laughs> and you should explore and do other stuff because we've been together for so many lifetimes. Let's just do something different. Now, that's commonly reported. So, But there's another thing that's commonly reported, which is once you get outside yourself – then you can find the person that is supposed to be for you, okay? So getting outside yourself means, like, don't worry about it, don't think about it, but focus on the things that, that open your heart. Focus on the things that, that make you laugh, that, that you enjoy doing. And once you sort of focus on those, you're going to find that other person who, by the way, is looking for you. They've, they're doing the, they're having the same experience you are. It's like, why am I so alone? The trick is you need to open up to their frequency, to their okay. vibration, so that they can find you. So that's that's part of it is just not focusing on the, you know, what the television is telling us to have as a relationship. Try to focus on the people that make you laugh, the people that move your heart, the people that open your heart. And you know those people. They're out there. Sometimes they're friends at work. And, allow, and sometimes a person at <coughs> work can be the conduit. The person who takes you to find your soulmate. I've done this. I ask people to describe the first conscious memory they had when, when they found their significant other, whether, whatever it is. And sometimes people say, well, I'm, you know, I still don't know if I should be with this person. But <laughs> they do say that like the weird, we met in the weirdest way. We met because a friend of a friend took me to a party, and I've never seen that person again. But it's like they were the guardian angel who walked me in to meet the love of my oh. life. So, Jason, the love of your life is listening to this broadcast. <laughs> you have to allow that she's out there and just go out there and, and be open to people. That's uh, the trick. Yeah, can I ask you a question, Jason? If she's on the East Coast. Um, Dude, hello. she may be online. You don't know. You know yeah. She may be online. You know, she may be on Skype right now, like searching yeah, for you. Yeah, the medium might be the computer. Uh, hopefully she's not on Tinder. But whatever, you know, whatever <laughs> she's on, you're, you're going to be open to it. Can I ask you this question, Jason? And I, I mean, I'm not saying this lightly. I feel this woman has some sure. um, connection to, and not in a bad way, okay? She seems to know a lot, a lot about firearms or guns, where someone who's versed in... Yeehaw! Yeah, that kind of things. And she is, I know. <laughs> 
I never said that to anybody ever. She'll okay? handcuff you. <laughs> or right. she's like, at, she's apt to be. She's a little bit. Um, Is that somebody he knows? I don't know. Or, or don't he's know. going to meet. I don't think he knows her. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. So, that, so that's what you're looking for. Yeah. So go hang out in a gun shop. No, well, or he, she likes to do, she's structured, but she's also like kind of spur of the moment. She likes sunsets. She likes someone who's that says what they mean, straightforward. She doesn't need somebody to beat around the bush. These are all Google search terms, by the way. <laughs> I, know, I, I know it's weird, but I love women who are military. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Okay, so. You nailed that. I love. So, military where do military women, women hang out, are, dude? Mm-hmm. Where do they hang out? Where do. Where I, do I, I, live, I live maybe 20 minutes away from uh, a base. Okay. Hello. Ooh. So, and go hang out somewhere near it. If I get on it. Tinder or Plenty of Fish or anything like that, I, I always gravitate toward. Military woman. Well, oh, she's see. got a gun. So find where crazy. they are. Find out where they hang out. Well, it maybe Rebecca's be, onto something. Yeah, well, it might be a club is. or something. Yeah, you know, a like a workout club. or no, a workout club. Yeah, you know, maybe. a place where you go work out, right. and then you're going to find out. Like, oh, this is so weird. You know, you just happen to be, you know, into the same thing. The point that. is, you need to get out and meet people. Okay, now, so that's a, that's Jason, I'm going to give you a little tip. Yeah, though. that that's my biggest thing is I need to get out. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, right now, was all I do is I stay at home. Right. But I work for the military. Oh, oh, oh God! And there's cool. lots of women with guns. Oh, well, <laughs> whatever. We, let's not get him shot. No, let's no. Just, uh, you know, allow that he's, uh... No, it wasn't something that was negative. It was just women that knew how to fire arms. Yeah. I mean, fire guns. Well, and, I think she's mm-hmm. she's right under your nose. But um, I got to tell just this, Jason. You have to cut your hair a little different. Do a little mini makeover. I feel like you're a nice looking guy, but kind of look, shake it up a little bit. Work change, on it. Change your your normal. You know, you're normal a little bit. And you're going to find this woman will come up to you and she'll say, God, you know what? I really like your haircut. That is a simple thing. Well, that's a good tip. Yeah. And you'll see (laughs) this is real. This is right. Okay. Um, And that you just have to smile big. I've had the same haircut since the 90s. All right. It's time to change it up, boy. Mullet days But we're going to let you go to sleep because it's... it's, No, no, mullet. I'm kidding. It's time to (laughs) celebrate Christmas. Yes. And and get a nice haircut before Christmas because you might meet her at that Christmas party. Dude. And um, get the, you know, and and maybe buy yourself a new shirt, like a bright color or something. No, not too bright. She won't like that. Okay. Buy something like a nice black. Blue. blue. You look sexy in black. Let's That's okay. And, and uh, make sure your your teeth are nice and shiny. Clean. Yes. And I'm telling Floss. you. Floss. And, and, you know, not too He's heavy not cologne. And not <laughs> too <laughs> Mouthwash cologne. would be good, God, too. You guys are hilarious. Just, okay. you'll get out there. And, <laughs> yeah. And make sure your pants aren't too short and your socks don't show. You know? No, he doesn't need to do that. He just needs, <laughs> seriously, you need a new look. You look the same for a long time. Don't and if you shake socks. it up, you're going to find your baby. Okay. Yeah. All right. You got it there, Thank Jason. You, now go to bed. You're going to be late for work Thanks, in the morning. Jason. It'll be my fault. And Definitely. also we have to wrap this up because <laughs> yeah, because it's time to eat. Dr. Drew's had his nap. So it's time okay. to go out and eat for my birthday. It's going to be a, yes. a little birthday. And uh, let me tell you something. You'll find your Annie Oakley. Tell us if her name's Annie. You never know. Annie Oakley. <laughs> Annie, get That's your gun. Funny. Thanks for calling, Jason. It's always I a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. Well, well that wraps up another another fun episode. Calling Suzanne. out with Susan Pinsky, yes, and um, poor Jason, he he has he builds like the boards in in the big uh, fighter pilot planes. Cool. Wow. He's like the board engineer. Don't has, say too much because you know. No, that's all I know. Loose lips. He sink works. Ships. He work, Yeah, but he has to get. He has to be at work at five a.m. Uh, and morning. he's in the East Coast. He just and needs I know a new hairdo. Yeah, we'll 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 find him somebody maybe. We'll yeah. see. And um, I, and thanks. I also need somebody from his past, and that's what I was getting to. Mm. Well, he's been about. married. He has a child. He's not. He's not. You know. He's not. But he's just. He's kind of in a rut. But anyways, thanks for calling in. I hope it works out. And also, I want to thank you guys so much. This was really inspirational. Yeah. I really love the twist and the turns. And Don't you love Mr. Martini? Yes, yes. And we'll have back. Back. I'd love to have a martini. I was going to say that. <laughs> hey. that Welcome to join us. <laughs> I wanted to talk to Drew. I wanted to ask him a few questions, but the next time. Go ahead. We'll do you go time. ahead. Yeah, if he's, yeah. he's awake now, so. We'll do, he's well, not, how long do we take, have? Well, we, well we, we, we have dinner reservations in about 
25 minutes. Oh, okay. But. Well, he's waving that we're okay. All right, so let me ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> okay. It's just because I, I do, wanted to... Do you do to... hypnosis yourself? No, Come I don't. Here, I don't. I've, sure. I've learned. I've learned how to do it. You, you were helping me nap. So... <laughs> you, you got that vocal No, I do. Oh, I do. I do. It's, it's true. Gonna, no, I have taken some classes in it, and I've filmed enough of them, so I understand the questions. But here's the here's the premise of what I'm going to ask Dr. Drew, and it's really simple, and anybody can do it, and there's no science to it. It's just more of a parlor game than anything else. And what I'm going to ask him to do is to access a memory that he had without any hypnosis. We're just here, like, having coffee. He's wide awake. And and so you mentioned earlier that there was a, I think it was a disconcerting memory. Yeah, or? I had a, a, what I thought was a horrible dream when I was very young, like under two, under three. Mm -hmm. And as I, I had some flashes later in life that led me to believe this was actually a memory and not okay. a and, not a, and was there a person involved? Yes. Okay. And can you picture that as a male or female? Well, there are two, but the male was the one that was terrifying me. Okay. Male, male terrifying. Okay. Very good. And uh, about how old is this male? 40. About 40s. Uh, what color hair? Dark. Color eyes? Can you dark. see him? Dark eyes, dark hair. Glasses. What's he wearing? Mustache. Glasses and a mustache. Okay. And what time period does the does his clothing represent? 50s. 1950s. Okay. And you were born in? 58. 58. Okay. So early 50s. So, but let's just take a look at this guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other guy might be have an important issue involved, but let's just focus on this guy for a second. The other one was my mother. Okay. So, so let's set her aside. Yeah. So this guy, um, does he have a name? He didn't at the at the in the. Okay, I just want you to open yourself up to a name yeah. just so we can. Well, call I'm him guessing I guess I have associated it with somebody that my father knew, and I'm imagining it's him. Okay, let's go. What's his but first he had name? A, Jerry. Jerry. Okay. He had very a very good. strange uh, feature that was terrifying to me as this little child. Okay, what he, was his feature? He had where your irises are and your pupils. He had red crosses. Okay, very cool. Oh. All right, in in this Ugh, in this right? in in life or in this memory. In this memory. In this memory. Okay, very good. Now, red crosses don't necessarily mean something dark or evil, do they? They're just images. I I, I kind of put it all together one time. Shall I? Say sure, go ahead. I was in uh, Boston when I was twenty, and uh, I saw a nineteen fifties white ambulance van hmm, with a good. red cross on the side. Very good. And sure. I went, oh, my God. That's, that's the cross. That's okay. the cross. And it all shoo, sort of came together. Wow. Maltese that's cross is what it's called. Uh, I know the cross from Boston. Yes. Well, no, it was it was a red, you know, red cross, red cross. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, red cross, red cross. But yeah. just like the equal length. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, so it, now, but in the 50s, ambulances were white vans with red crosses. All right. Crosses so let's, let's do something interesting here. Let's this Jerry. Let's yeah. put him in front of us. How far away is he from you? You're where you are right now. Okay, very good. I want him to come closer. To me or you? Uh, to you. And okay. I want you to think of it as a photograph or okay. a holograph. Okay. And just get closer to him. Okay. And now, are are these crosses a reflection of something that he's looking at in his eyes? Or no, they... I sort of lost the cross thing because I've done a lot of sort of processing on this in therapy. <laughs> so okay. the crosses aren't there when I see the picture. Okay, very good. So yeah. just go on uh, up to him yeah. and stand in front of him. Stand. It's a picture? No, yes, it's a picture, okay, but I right. want you to stand in front of him. I'm okay. going to shift the present tense. Right. We're now in front of Jerry. Okay. And uh, what what kind of clothing is he wearing? He's like, like a button down or khaki, like nondescript. Nondescript. And so do me a favor, reach out and take hold of his hand. Okay. Like picture. you're shaking it. In the picture. In the picture, right. in your mind's eye. It's not this difficult. To All right. And so what's the feeling you get from this guy? Is he mean? No. Is he happy? Warmth. Warmth. Okay, very. Is a familiar warmth? Yeah. Okay, it's somebody that you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jerry, I want. can I ask you a question directly, Jerry? Sure. Okay. Do you know this boy? Do you know this young man? Do you no. know this person? No. You've never met him before? No. So he feels a familiarity with you. Why does he feel that way? Don't know. All right, let's examine it. Would you show him, Jerry, show him in his mind's eye, just give him an example of some place, journey, or or person, something that happened that he can relate to that he has a memory of you. 
I'm sorry. I, me, Let me say that again. I, I, Drew's I, not getting it. You have to separate no, I, Drew and I, Jerry a little bit. No, no, I screwed up because I looked All over right. at Jennifer for a second. My All brain right. went out. So let's just hold his hand. Now mm-hmm. take both of his hands. He, he's morphing a bit. This is not the same Jerry that I Very was talking good. about. That's so. okay. I'm, I, we appreciate that. Yeah. This is a, it's suddenly become somebody quite different. But uh, Okay. What does he look like now? Now he's like a Burgermeister or something with a hairy arm. Thank you. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Germany's coming. German. Okay. A Burgermeister <laughs> yeah. represents. I know what that is. I don't know okay. What Good. And, and what year, if we're going to ask Jerry what year this is? Turn of the century. Turn of the century. Okay. And take I'm a look sure at I'm not sure it's his... Jerry anymore. Okay. That's fine. And because it might also be Jerry. Mm. So let's look at his clothing for a second. Is this something? Because I asked him specifically to show you an image of something yeah. that you was familiar, and he did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Burgermeister. So I want Whatever you to. Whatever that is. Sort look... of guy in, in, it's in uh... Germany. But, so look but, around. But somebody in. Uh... Lederhosen. Lederhosen. So look <laughs> around. Look over his shoulder. I'm talking fast just because I know like we don't have a lot of time. I, I I'm really don't – I'm just free associating at your – as yes. you suggested, Neuenschwanstein, the castle. Very good. Thank you. And, and do me a favor. Just look around the castle. What are we – is it day or night? Day. And look at the ground. Are you standing on grass or on dirt? No, well, I was sort of looking at it over his shoulder. Okay. Can we go into that castle? Yeah. Well, no, just take a look at your feet. Oh, my feet right now? Yeah. Dirt. Dirt. Okay. And so now I want you to take a look at you. Me. Yeah. Are you a boy or a girl? Boy. Okay. About how old? See, I, well, now I'm me. You're talking to me now. Okay, but all right, so let's I'm, I'm from me. the Burgermeister. Let's. Oh, from him. You want me to from, be him? Yeah. No. In other words, I want the burger. You're still holding the Burgermeister's hand. And you're ready to talk to him. You and no, to to him. I want you to shift your focus to him. Yeah, he's a boy. He's looking at you now. And what do you look like in this memory from the Burgermeister land? Are you a boy or a I girl? Can't, I can't quite do it. Okay, well, well, we can. So far, we are on dirt. Dirt, right? I'm, but I'm strict. But you, I'm still been. I'm me the whole time. That's okay because you are you. That's fine. And what I'm asking, uh, if from the perspective of Jerry, have him just take a look at you. He Do sees you, me as a boy. He sees you as a boy. Okay, very good. About how old? Eight, twelve. Twelve. Uh, what and color hair? Dark. Dark hair. Uh, what color eyes? Dark. Okay, very good. Is this you? Is he looking at you? I think so. Drew. Okay, yes. very good. And what's this boy's name in this lifetime? Drew. Drew. Let's just call him that. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. All right, so do me a favor. I want Jerry to tell us what's his relationship to you. Great-grandfather? Okay, very good. Okay, so there's a familial tie. Very good. And are we near the New Schwanstein Castle? Is that where we are? Are we in Austria or are we in Germany? You know, my conscious brain keeps kicking into this because it's, it's okay. a great-grandfather in Germany doesn't make sense. That's okay. Don't, that's why I said don't judge anything. Uh, no, we're don't not near this s- castle. It's just, okay. a, just an image. Just an image. Okay, yeah. very good. Very good. And, and I'm going to ask Jerry a question. What you're showing this It's hard image. to be Jerry. It's, that's, that's, I find that to be challenging. But okay, I'm Burgermeister, I'm asking yeah. you a simple question. Yeah, yeah. Where are we in the world? Are we on this planet? Northern Germany. Northern Germany. Very good. And what's the biggest city that's nearby? What Berlin comes to mind? Berlin the biggest, but there's others. Okay. I'm sorry, what was the name of the city? Berlin. Berlin. Okay, very good. But, the, okay. but there are more there are important, others. there's I understand. significant cities for Jerry. Okay, very good. And, that are not Berlin. And Mr. Burgermeister, about what Mainz? year? Mainz? Mainz? Main, okay. Not, not, Main, not, yes. the, not the port city, but something in... A little bit. Berlin. Okay, very good. And would you do me a favor? I, you know, Jerry um, Burgermeister, take <clears throat> this boy, <clears throat> show him the house that he is living in as a child. That I'm living in? That, that he was living in. That the Burgermeister is Burgermeister's living, living in. Let's go there. What, show okay. the house. Sorry? I think. Okay. I'm, again, free associating. It's yeah. uh, greenish with some turrets and a big porch. Okay, very good. And let's go inside the house. What, right. What's it feel like inside Dark and Victorian. I don't, it, I don't like it. Drew doesn't like it. Okay. Is there, okay. Is there anybody in this house besides? Mm, it's empty. It's empty. Okay, very good. Whose home is this? Is this the Burgermeister's? Yes. Okay. Do me a favor, Burgermeister. Put into Drew's mind the, your last name. Schmidt. Okay, thank you. With a D or with just with a T? DT. DT. Okay, thanks. With a S C H M I D T. Okay, thank you. And what year? Just pop a year. 1900. In. 1900, literally 1900 or 1890 or right, right there. Right there, the 1900. 20th century. Board. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Now, I want to, I'm going to, because we're just skipping around here, I want, uh, I want you to do something for you, for me, Mr. Mr. Schmidt. Mm. I, I want you to, Invite Drew's 
spirit guide here. I know this is counterintuitive to something that he would consciously think of, but I'm going to ask for the spirit guide to show up. I'm skipping ahead. We could spend hours to get to this place, but I'm just asking. Whoever is Drew's spirit guide, join this little crowd that we're talking to here. Now, I want you to look around, Drew. Is there anybody here besides these two fellas, a male or a female presence, or both or neither? Neither. Nothing. Not, mm, I wouldn't say nothing, but nothing I can discern. Okay, very good. Well, uh, let's go into the not quite discerning. Is yeah, it, it's let's, a light. It's a, thank you. Okay, so let's, can I ask this light to come forward or sure. you get closer to it? Sure. Okay. And what would you describe the light? What color is mm, it? It looks like a sunset, but brighter, and then it becomes a candle. Excellent. So it's a like orange, mm, bl- like a almost like a fantasy sunset. Okay, very not, good. Not and, a... and before we get to the candle part, just keep into the the light part of it. Describe it. Is it two dimensional, flat, or it's, is it? It's a sunset, like like a, on the ocean kind of sunset, like a okay. horizon sunset, oh, like that kind of a sunset. Yeah. And then yeah. is it? Um, is there an energy to it? Okay. Or okay, yeah. all right, very good. Now do me a favor, and I this this energy that's right in front of you, put your hand inside of it, your imaginary hand. Just slip it right into this energy. What mm-hmm. does that feel like? Goo. Goo? Warm. Warm. Okay. And is there any emotion associated with that warmth? Mm, Peace. Peace. All right. Very good. Thank you. Warmth and peace. All right. So I'm going to ask this light if the light could transform into an entity so that we can have a conversation, male or female. I guess male. Okay, very good. And and so, thank you. And so, male, can you give us a name? It doesn't matter if it sounds like anything you've ever heard before. Just Maybe my father, Mort. Mort. Yeah. All right, very good. So, Mort, thank you. So, getting, this is getting weird for me. Don't. It's okay. We're just having. It's been a weird game. for quite some time here. By the way, <laughs> we're just. <laughs> we're just it's getting really it's weird. Definitely not no, no. A dude it's thing. Getting, but I think what's what's interesting about this is I'm not creating anything. You are, and this no, is co- your. We're co-creating. We're co-creating. To be fair. All right, and I'm asking <laughs> questions. So let's allow his name to be Mort. Okay. So I'm Mort. Would you appear to oh, Drew's consciousness so you can go ahead? What were you going to say? Well, I had a weird – this is another weird important dream that was – like I think I had a split-off sense of my father as a kid in my – sort of my own psychological development. And this feels like that split-off piece a bit. Okay, very like, not good. not my real father. All right, so let's – Not the, my actual father. Like I understand. Off, like a split – okay, very good. Well, something. I understand it because consciousness apparently is here and is also back there. Mm-hmm. So this very well, very well may be – your father's higher consciousness, that's a possibility. But let's ask Mort some questions, if we can. Mort, can we address you directly? Sure. Would that be okay? Yeah. Thank you. Um, first of all... What about the candle? I want to stay with the candle, too, okay. which feels like a more... Warm kind of uh, expression. Uh, better. Okay, so let's call this candle Mort. Uh, can mm, we? The candle's different. All right. So, oh, so can we hold the candle? Yep. All right, very good. Let's hold the candle. I'm going to ask Mort some direct okay. questions. All right. First of all, Mort, what do you think about what we're doing here? Having Weird. This, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, you know me. You probably have heard about me. I'm one of those guys who talks <laughs> to spirits on the flip side. Okay. And is it okay for me to ask sure. you questions? Sure. All right. Would you do me a favor, Mort? Would you show Drew what he looks like to you? What's the visual that you mm, have? He sees me as a baby. As a baby. Okay, very good. Okay. Is there an association with that baby feeling? Is it? Warmth. Warmth again. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. And so I want you to do me a favor, Mort, because we're skipping around here. Mm. I want you to take Drew by the hand, mm. and I want you to walk him into his council. Council? Drew does not know what I'm talking about, but Mort, you know what I'm talking about. Huh. So would you do me a favor, walk him towards his council? Are we inside or outside? It's going back towards the light. Okay, very good. Let's go. Let's go beyond that. Let's go back towards that light, and let's go to where your council is. They're waiting for you. Are we in a room? Are we uh, in a room? We're in a room. Okay, very good. And now, are they? How are they arrayed? Are there? How many people are there in your in this room? I can't really tell. But roughly from twelve. Twelve. Thank you. And so let's. Are they in a straight line or are they in a I've curve? Seen both. They're like on, on the walls, like sitting around the walls. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. We're going to meet these people right now. I Wait, hope you don't mind. That's right? more. So Mort, <laughs> I, I, Drew, Drew is tiring of this. I right. must tell you, I know I'm all right. this is stressful because it's hard to keep this kind of a weird focus. Yes, but just allow it to, that we're doing right. something very profound, okay. which is really important for you to hear. 
Okay? okay. I want you to go to the first council member. Uh, how are there I'm all? I'm having trouble seeing individuals. That's okay. Are they are just what's your it's impression? Like, like Native Americans are here. Very good. Is are it? you? Are they all male? Are they female? Mm, are they mix. combo mix? All right. Let's go Mostly to the male. first person on the far left. What's this person look like? Okay. <laughs> like a female, like pilgrim. Very, very good. And I want you to go up close to her. Okay. And and first of all, I want to thank this person for being here. Okay. What, does She's she, one of the only women in there. Let's give her a name. Let's ask Marie. Her. Marie, thank you. And, and what is how is she dressed? Well, like a like, like a pilgrim. Like brown. Like, I'm just saying well, with like, colors. Like a dark with a white apron and one of those those bonnets that they would you know. Very good. I understand. And so <laughs> and so Marie Marie is her name, correct? Something like that. Okay, Marie. I right. want I want you to put into Drew's mind how you earned your position on the council. What is the quality in Drew's life that you bring to the to his council? What is the 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 overwhelming important quality that you bring to him? She brings history. Thank you. History. All right. And hence the uh, pilgrim outfit. We like that. It's very clever. <laughs> and I want you to reach out. Can you reach out and touch her hand? Yep. Okay. Now look at her eyes. What color are her eyes? Blue. Blue. And what color is her hair? Bonnet. Bonnet. <laughs> Bonnet, bonnet, bonnet. There's she no got, hair under there. Light, see it. light hair. So she got blue eyes and, and light hair. Very good. And now I want you to describe the emotion or the feeling you're getting from holding this person's hand. Kindness. Kindness. What kind of kindness? I mean, it's a simple word. Is it? Is it overwhelming kindness? No, it's gentle, wise, deliberative. Let me ask Marie. How do you feel? What we're doing? Do you think this is weird? She, that everyone thinks it's weird in this room. Okay, very good. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, I don't think I so, don't think it's weird. No, no, she's. We're talking about the council. The council they think it's you. weird. So, Marie, I, I think I'm hypnotized. Marie, myself. I want you to ask. I want you to say something to Drew. <laughs> I want you to give him a sentence, and to the people listening in, I want you to give him a wisdom sentence. is wealth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wisdom is wealth. Uh, Drew, is this something you've heard before? No. Okay, thank you. So, Marie, this is coming from Marie. I would call this new information. Let's move to the next person to Marie. Is that a male or a female? It's just... I, I'm having trouble because I have this presence of, like, a North American Indian. Thank you. And, and that feels... That's wonderful. That, but because that feels like... Uh, don't judge it. Yeah, I'm feeling. I'm judging. Right, it. Please don't. I'm judging it. Because right. I'm going to talk to him in his well, you're native. With pilgrims, what do you I'm expect? Gonna, I'm going to talk to him in his native language. All right. Now, all, right? all right. If he's you don't mind, there. he's sitting there. All right. So very good. So describe what he's wearing. Headdress. How many feathers? Lots. Um, how many? Ten. Ninety. Twenty. Ninety. Are they up? Or are they down? All the way down his back. Up all and the way then down. down his back. Up and then down. Okay. And I want you to look carefully at his face. Yeah. Look at those eyes. Mm. What is it? What's the emotion you get looking at him? Hang on. I'm, I'm having trouble staying. Uh, Just depth? Depth. depth. I, All right. I well, f- let's take his hands. Sometimes that helps. Take his hands. No, he doesn't your... want me to. Okay. I want you to look at the front of his, of his dress. Is he wearing any symbols or emblems or jewelry? Beads. Beads. Okay. Uh, glance over to Marie for a second. Does yeah. she have anything on her? No. no. Very, very sparse. Sparse. All right. So the beads. Just let's ask, I, what's this person's name? This one is like making me emotional. Uh, very, good. very good. Very yeah. good. I understand. And that's why I'm having trouble staying with his eyes. That's okay. You don't have to. Just look at his beads for a second. Mm. Okay? Just focus on his beads. And, and please, would, if he can give us a name or the tribe that he represents. Humanity. Humanity. Is there a Very tribe that's oh, called that's, itself human? Yes, yes, yeah. it, there is. Well, the Sioux considered everybody in their tribe to be humanity, yeah. okay. and everybody who was not in the Sioux was not humanity. Okay. Let me ask him directly. Does he mind if I ask him a question? I know this is weird. For short him. patience. But... Very short patience. Very good. Are you Sioux? Would I, could I characterize you as you Sioux? You could characterize it. Thank you. Way. Are you Lakota or Dakota or Nakota? Which one? Nakota. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And so, I, listen, I appreciate the fact that you're here. Nay, hey, ha, ha. Okay, that's my, <laughs> my way of saying thank you. So I want to ask you a question about our friend Drew here. You have been watching over him for so many lifetimes. Do you feel like he's doing a good job? 
He will. He will. And would you would you show him why he's doing the kind of work he's doing where he's saving lives on a daily basis? He's waving a spear over me. Very good. Okay, and is that spear a a warrior spear or is that a spirit? It's more more uh, uh, ceremonial. More, more ceremonial, almost almost like the way a peace pipe would be how you could communicate with people. That feels like a blessing. Kind a of. blessing. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate but that. It's some power being transmitted or something. Or okay. Sense of power or something. Well, what does that feel like? I, mm, is he it's tra- all very confusing. Is he me. transmitting it to you? Do you have a feeling of it? Yes. Oh, very good. So to focus on it for a second. Allow it to be part of your reality. What is that feeling that he's trying to impart from you with his great knowledge of humanity and what it's like, nature? Um, patience and work to be done. Oh, wow. How wonderful is that? So we had the first person who gave you kindness, and now he's giving you patience. Okay, That one said wealth is wisdom. He's not giving me patience. I want to go to dinner. All right. All right. Very good. Let me out of here. All right. Well, hang on. Hang on. We are. I'm kidding. We don't have to go through all 12. But I mean, we can't. But hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We'll get there. I have to pay for time here. No, I understand. No, no. I won't go through all. I did as fast as I can go. Wisdom is wealth. All right. So hold on. We're going to get to the end. And so here. Here's the end. I want you to focus, Drew, for a second on the person who is your spokesperson, the person in this council who is the sort of chief, the person who represents everybody else. Uh, I feel like I'm put at the head of the council. Well, but I want you to look at this group of 12, and somewhere within that 12, there's somebody that is the spokesperson, a male or female or neither or both. There's a reluctant Person okay, that very good. Probably should come forward. Is in, and can you come forward, please? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Male or female? Male. Male. Sort and of. and roughly a name. Bill. Not very nondescript. Very non. It's okay. No. It's okay. And wearing is he a bearded or no, just clean cut? Just very cool. Sort of. All right. So Bill, listen, I really appreciate this. I want you to give put in Drew's mind why we're doing this. Why this is important for Drew to experience this. For patience. Thank you. All right, patience. It seems to yeah. be a common theme yeah. over there. <laughs> so, so but let's just allow. And so, I'll, all right. Sorry, so, uh, I was Bill, joking. I want to. I, I want to thank. I want to. Th- I know. I wish we did. I wish. I, but I, we did it pretty quickly. And so, I want to thank everybody in the room. Let's thank everybody now. Okay. Before we go, I want your Bill to put a feeling somewhere in Drew's body. Put a feeling so that he knows when he feels that experience of that feeling, he'll know he's connected to you and you want to impart some knowledge or information to him. Can you do that? Okay. Thank you. You don't have to share with us what it is, but you now have that feeling. And whenever that feeling happens to you, you'll know Bill (laughs) and the other guys, they're all trying to let you know you're on the right path, dude. You're doing a wonderful thing. And now one last sentence. Is there anything, Bill, that you want to impart to the audience that's listening into this very unusual it's really interview? Scram. Get out of here. Okay, thank you very much. Go have a nice dinner. I appreciate it. Wisdom All right, thank well. you, Bill. <laughs> All right, that's what I do. And we did that yes. in 15 minutes. Thank awesome. you very much. Rich, thank you. Thank that, you. That's a hypnotic thing. thing. What's hypnotic about it? I'm totally sober. I've had a glass of water. Your <laughs> eyes are wide open. No, Where's... but it's a, it's a guided, you know, hypnotic It's a guided experience. meditation. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. And so my only, I'm pretty mellow, but I'm also super hungry. But so. the only <laughs> but the only point is is that your testimony of what you just described is consistent with everybody that I do this with. In what sense? Twelve Dave. people on a council, sometimes 12? six, really? sometimes Seriously? eight. Twelve is yeah, about no. the most amount. I have to tell you, I saw that too. Twelve. When the age when you were at the we, castle? Yeah, yeah. Well, we were following it. Yeah. So Each crazy. person on the council represents I did not some see a quality thing. that I you I literally learned. am I'm d- I Fascinating. dead or yeah. dumb. It, it did feel know. like parts of self. It felt like, but and, it, it, and so that, that disconcerting too. dream you had, that was actually you reconnecting with somebody that you've known in a previous lifetime. Wow. It's all good. We don't die. We just hang out and check them out later. <laughs> I love it. All right, let the host take over. I love it. And you Thank can find you. Rich Thanks, Martini Drew. at richmartini.com. And yes. you can find Rebecca Fearing at RebeccaFearing.com. Cool? 
get a reading and also Jennifer Schaefer at Jennifer M. Schaefer. S H A F F E R. Yes. And also you can find them all on my cast of Clairvoyance yes. on my website. And also Merry Christmas. check us Susan, out at Dr. Do. Merry thank Christmas, you. everyone. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Leash Navidad. <laughs> Let the party begin. All right. Rich, thank yep. you. That so, was so cool. You got- Thanks for listening to Calling Out with Susan Pinsky. Follow Susan on Twitter or Instagram at First Lady of Love. And check callingoutwithsusanpinsky.com for all the latest info and links to our cast of clairvoyance. Hey, this is Dr. Drew, and you are listening to This Life with Bob Forrest and Dr. Drew. And me, Mike Catherwood. That's right. We're doing it this it's time. It's really the last bastion of hope. Though. Don't get your health care from a Google search. We're interested in people not dying. That, mm-hmm. that, that We've gotten sick of that. There's plenty of people who drink or use yep. that are fucked that it's not because of the drugs and alcohol. Entitlement, grandiosity, ego, selfishness, self-preoccupation. Are we talking about the government or are we talking about kids? Well, no, calm down. <laughs> calm down. I told Drew the other day because he had his fourth Diet Coke during the radio show. I said, listen, you got to understand, having a diet soda is is like murdering bums. Well, I can't mean, believe you just said that. Well, you don't have to laugh at it. Call us up, email us up, at wherever yeah. the hell it is. Bob Dr. and I have... DrDrew.com. Bob and I have... And me, Mike Catherwood. Lots to talk about still, so we'll keep this thing going. And if you like it, uh, please tell a friend. So check it out. Thanks for listening. You live. Right.